you know what? I, TV's done. TV. I was having this conversation. TV is done. Like the writing's been on the wall since the last financial collapse. Like, and I, I was having this conversation. You know, to that point. Uh, you know, from '09 when things started, when they, you know, the dust settled from the uh, from the financial collapse in '08, and they started trying to put the pieces back together. You know, the 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 bull market never af- changed budgets for television. T- you know, all these companies were making billions and billions of dollars. All these ad revenues were, you know, advertising on TV. It never, I never saw a budget increase for anything. Uh, from uh, you know, even to this day. I mean, well, obviously now it's going down again. So it was always a telltale sign that like, well, this isn't, this might be sustaining. It's not recovered and they're only going to start going down again. And you just can't keep making TV shows for pennies and you know what they're really paying now. Like, and so I think TV's, I think TV's wrapped. Because the ad dollars aren't there. The ad dollars aren't there. And I think people who are content creators and uh, entertainers, they don't record, you I mean, Mr. Beast. Like some the greatest example. Greatest, like some kid with- Turned a, down a billion. Yeah. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Because we don't have to go out and go, mommy, Yeah, can I have some more chicken? Yeah. Like, I don't know, I did the weird accent. No, but that worked. It was good. <laughs> but it's <laughs> like, yeah, because I, I was just to talk about this in one of my solo rants. It's because I, I had a show advice. I almost sold a couple of years ago, and they go, we can go the most 150 the most 175. And listen, there's Vice, there's people at Vice that are annoying, but I love a lot of their content. Yeah. I think they're great, whether they're left or right. They're really good. And my buddy has the number one show that my buddy Stu works on behind the ring, mm-hmm. the uh, dark side of the ring. And but I'm like, that, I mean, that was a fucking, um, like, almost my salary. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I like to do stuff. And I'm not saying I couldn't cut some of my salary, but like to make a crew work, yeah. they're not getting paid enough. No. And I just thought that's so, so, yeah. So I think that's one of the great reasons it's done that you told me. But I also think just because besides the preachiness and the hypocrisy yeah. and the exposing from the Internet of all the things, whether you believe them or not, of scumbaggery, I just also think that I get more, I could scroll on TikTok a lot longer than I could watch you know, five episodes of a TV show. Yeah. And I learn, I mean, I know it's burning my brain, but I learn certain recipes. I'll learn a certain workout. I'll yeah. learn a skill. And I know they're taking all my information, but like, <laughs> do, like shows like white Lotus and euphoria. Sure. I'll try to watch them. And I, I'm sure they're amazing, but I just don't have the time. Yeah. And it's like, I just think, the whole, I think celebrity is disrupted and it's done forever. Like, yeah. There's only going to be a few legacy stars left. Well, the, let the Golden Globes be the example of that. Yes. I mean, you, what you just told me, five and a half million views? 5.3 million, Jeez. the lowest rating of all time, and it was on a Tuesday. Yeah. I have to tell people, like, you can't, that's like. There was nothing going on Tuesday. It's a Tuesday, a rainy night on a Tuesday. Yeah. And I was, I drove around last night after I was working. And I just said, oh, I want to see if there's any parties. Like none. No um San Vicente by the by the design center, Elton John party. That's not there. No by the Beverly Hills Library. There wasn't one. There was no parties on Robertson, no parties in La Cienega, no parties in Beverly Hills. I didn't see one fucking party. Yeah. It dude, it's done. It's a fucking I mean, let and but everyone do the award ceremonies now, the participation trophies. You you don't even I yeah, I don't even think there are I want to still say they're somewhat real, but because I know because there's certain awards that I've gotten, and the reason I got them was a publicist. Well, one, if they're smaller, the will you show up? Yeah. And then the other one is that's like, we have said movie coming out, we're going to give you this award. Yeah. It also has to do with publicity. Totally. But I would hope to God a Grammy and an Oscar aren't that. But. They, I mean, from you know, with the with the Grammys, there's a lot of lobbying that goes along with the Grammys, mm-hmm. you know, and I think with, because music is so and has always been, and I'm, I maintain this has always been incredibly inclusive. Yeah, for or, sure. You know, well, at least the most. Yeah, way more so than 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 film or TV. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the Grammys still count for something, but mm-hmm. the Oscars, like, pff, come on. Like it's they're like all right who can we who can we invite so we have a good shot of them in the audience for one because mm-hmm. people want to see famous people 100%. and then it's like who can we give awards to who did a good job but we also want to keep everyone happy 
We don't want to piss anyone off. Dude, I, I, you're you're so right. And I feel that that it's just like I feel that fame because people can do their own thing, they feel like, why them? Why not me? Yeah. And that leads to a lot of annoying people on social media, but there's also lead, leading to an emergence of some really good people yeah. that would never get the shot. 100%. And yeah. so I always tell people, they're not taking away from your traditional job. They just created another lane. Yeah. Um, speaking of the music business, because you sparked my brain, you had some interesting takes on things. And uh, we were talking about tickets, and we were talking about Taylor Swift, and I don't want that smoke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's a she's a that she's a. You have an opinion about her, but yeah. I don't know if you want to talk about it. I mean, I don't I don't know her. I don't. I mean, listen, this is just my ten thousand foot view, but like there was some skull gut skull duggery with those that tickets. So what happened? So. Now, this is, I've got to kind of go back in my memory for this info, but so there is a, a, a tactic that artists will play. I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. When yeah. they buy all the fucking VIPs for themselves. Yes. And then last minute release them. Yes, exactly. So it's, it's a, it is a tactic that people will play. It's, it, it, they also might not even have to buy them themselves. It could be a part of their deal where they, the promoter will be like, cool, we'll give you the first 10 rows. You know, if you take less, we'll give you the first 10, and then you can have your people release them. There's, a, there's all sorts of uh, ways you can kind of, you know, bake the cake, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, you know, and I just saw, I'm like, wait a minute. You're telling me Ticketmaster crashed for Taylor Swift? I was like, okay, sure, but there's been there's artists that are equally as big as her that go on sale and Ticketmaster doesn't crash. Mm -hmm. Like that to me, it just felt suspicious. Like you know, you hear about oh, Coldplay. she's the world's biggest. Well, she I mean, is Coldplay yeah, too. Absolutely, but Coldplay, Coldplay doesn't crash. You know, Foo Fighters don't crash. Like Rolling Stones don't crash. Like what? I just it feels it to me. It just feels like all right. Was it a publicity thing? But then you hear, oh, they're gonna investigate. You know, Congress wanted to investigate, and I was like, wait, Congress wants to investigate Ticketmaster, but nothing about the last two years with like the pandemic. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. So funny. <laughs> but you had it. You thought that Taylor Swift had her hands in the pie. Well, they yeah, everyone does. Mm -hmm. I I mean, listen, she is you. She is a very who, who it's definitely her, but she's definitely got some incredibly smart people behind her mm -hmm. helping kind of steer the ship. And she's very I know she's very involved on every level. Mm -hmm. Um, But I do. Yeah, I do think that there is a you know, Taylor Swift is can be is, is a very deliberate and calculated whether people think calculated is good or bad, but I think when you're managing an image like that, you have to be calculated. Mm -hmm. um, but she is, she's very deliberate with what she says, how she says it, what she releases. Like it's, it's, it's business. It's, it's no different than SpaceX launching rockets. But the thing was that it shut down and, and, and it was because there was, the demand was so high. Yes. That's okay. what they said. It shut down because the demand was so high and then people couldn't get their tickets and, and everyone's pissed off. And I forget, I forget exactly. It was a little over a month ago now, but, uh, but I just felt like she, there was some, like she was definitely, or her, her when I say she, her empire mm -hmm. was, uh, was very, it just feels too. She plays three nights at Gillette. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. Oh no, that's, she's the, the there's no one, there's no bigger female artist. Artist. Yeah. I mean, I'm, like, she's, I mean, dude, she's, I don't know if anyone, she's yeah. just top as top. Yeah. And like, and here's the thing with, with Taylor Swift, when you've got the biggest celebrities in the world coming to your show to like, remember she was in that runway thing and she had like Ellen DeGeneres, like doing like a weird walk on thing. This was a couple years ago. She had like the biggest people in the world just like coming on stage with her. You're kind of like, yeah, you're just, you're just, that's a fucking power move. Like you're just throwing. Oh, your she's a, she's a top. Yo, she's a, she's, she's top. She's a silverback. She's <laughs> she's a fucking silverback gorilla, and she's just like pounding her chest, Jesus and she's like, "I will fuck you up if you don't play nice." I get to what he just said, but people are gonna cry. But he's basically said she's she's the king or the queen, yeah, of the, the oh, most intense species, hundred percent. Yeah, I agree with that. But she will rip your arms off and beat you to death with them. 
<laughs> now that I've said this, like, the, the Swiftogram is just going to descend on it. She's, she's not a gorilla. <laughs> she's not a silverback. It's a compliment. Yeah, it is. She's like, the fuck, most, man. she's the toughest, strongest, fucking most if, intense. If I, but if, she's beautiful and she's super talented. If one of my daughters ended up being 50% of Taylor Swift, I would be so fucking proud. <laughs> there you go. I would be like, fuck yes, I have won the parent, like, lottery. Just And just so the Swifties don't come for us, you're saying that it's, she's she's fucking great, but she's intense. She's, she's, you don't want to get her on your bad side. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not trying to go to war. I, that, yes. that, that's a, I don't want a tough war with us. Uh, you don't want to get decimated. No, because I'll, I'll literally wake up dead. She'll send people. She'll yeah. send some of her fucking baby gorillas yeah. after you. Oh, yeah. No, you're done. Like, it's... <laughs> I love that you said silverback. It's a beautiful reference. It is. It's the toughest well, I mean, gorilla yeah, in the jungle. Yeah, you literally have to understand I think, animals. I think a silverback could, could have beat a lion up. Oh, my God, yeah, dude. Silverbacks, they are the, like, pound for pound, like, the strongest creatures on on planet Earth. Can it beat a bear up? Fuck yeah, dude. I mean, wow. there's, like, a silverback is terrifying. Where are they at? The Congo? Congo. You never saw one. I've never seen one. I, I would love to go. Put it this way, I did some time in Pretoria, South Africa, uh-huh. shooting a movie for six months. Nice. I mean, six weeks. And um, I lived on a safari. Yeah. And, like, giraffes, although I wouldn't fuck with them, were cool. You had to have <laughs> the right food. Um, kudu. I don't yeah. know if you know what those yeah, are. Yeah, yeah. They were cool. Springbok? Yeah, Springbok. Um, ostriches, do not fuck with them. No. I rode an ostrich once. <sighs> I have no idea how you did that. <laughs> Hippos. No. They will bite you in half. Yes, they will. They'll quarter you. People don't realize that. They're and the most dangerous animal on the uh, on the planet Earth. With so wreck. And uh, oh, monkeys. Yes. So dude, the, the, the monkeys would come in. Orangutans? Was they, no, what, no, they, they were orang- little baby monkeys. The oh, cute okay. ones. Yeah. And they weren't really, they fucking would every day take my fruit. And I have film of them doing it. I hid in the corner. And they literally are like little humans. And they look, they make sure no one's around. <laughs> and they, so just those guys yeah. were this big and they were so conniving. Yeah. So I can't imagine what a silverback's going to do. Oh, I never yeah. saw the gorilla. Oh, dude, no, they're like, yeah. I love a good, I love a good, uh, like, story of like, you know, well, you see it on like Instagram when like they're in the, the like captivity and someone like looks at the glass and pounds their chest and like through a glass, a silverback will like try and put its fist through the glass to get you. Yes. And it, I want to go back, but the hippos are beyond. I, I, I blame Disney. Yeah. Because they made hippos all cute and we just had that game Hungry Hungry Hippo. Hippos will be in the water and I was on a ATV driving from set and they were like, oh, the hippos are over there. And it started coming. Mm-hmm. Now, did it go fast? No, but it let me know very quickly to get the fuck away from it. I was in I was in Zambia. We, we were driving home from, from dinner one night. That's, we, in, that's not a statement you're going to hear often. I was in Zambia <laughs> and I was at leaving a Denny's in Zambia. So, so, you know, your dinner was literally in a forest. Yes. Yeah, we were with, like out in the eating, bush. Eating out of skulls. And, go we, ahead. and we were like driving. The, they had, you know, the driver and it was an open top defender and yeah. we're cruising. And all of a sudden, the guys start talking to each other in Afrikaans, and they're like, basically like, shit, gun it. Because I looked out the window, and there was a fucking giant hippo running alongside us as we're going down this dirt road. And they'll run alongside you and flip your flip your Jeep. Dude, yeah. It's still, yeah, I I believe, I don't know if I have the correct order, but deaths in Africa go low-key. Mos- uh, malaria. Yep, mosquitoes from, yeah. HIV, hippos. Yeah. I think hippos are like top five of yeah. how people die. Yeah. They uh they definitely will uh they they claim some they claim some souls. Oh. And okay, so going back to the music <laughs> business, because I you have so many opinions and I and I wanna say this is that to me growing up, the Ramones, your father, um, later on, you know, Kurt and, and Nirvana and then Rage and different people you know, Bob Dylan, they, they were, music was the fucking fight the man system. Yeah. Right. And now our biggest artists in the world, they're great, but the ones that are most popular, like I love Billie Eilish, you know, but mm-hmm. she's not like fuck the man, no. you know, and all this stuff. And I feel like comedy is really more that now 100%, than ever. 100%. It's, 100%. Would you see that's the new rock and roll? Yeah. Well, and I would say it's, it's the new rock and roll and it's the new philosophy. Okay. Like, you know, you look at, like, 
Dave Chappelle is not a comedian. Dave Chappelle is a fucking philosopher. Hundred percent. Like that guy is. He's Zeus. Yeah, he's he's operating differently than everyone else. Yes. His, his ability to like look at social, any social scenario, whether anything, and just dissect it from all these angles that you never would think is like. I mean, that's it's like it's like divine inspiration. A hundred percent. And and as we're talking, you and I are at lunch, and 